Previously on the Lupe and Royce Show. I was sick and I never get sick, so I was man down for about four or five days. What'd you have, nigga? Let's just get down to the brass tacks. I need to know. <laughs> we need to know specifics. You know, you know, you know what the fuck I had, bro. <laughs> the Lupe and Royce Show is a Say What Media production. Yo, what up? This is Lupe Fiasco, and I'm not eating sugar for December. Yo, this is Royce the Five Nine. I'm eating sugar right now. And this is Tom Frank, and I'm also eating sugar right now. I'm very proud of it. And you're listening to the Lupe and Roy Show. Bang! Welcome everybody. Welcome everybody. Lou, brother Lou. No sugar this month. Why? Too much sitting down and maintaining like the same diet while not moving around. There had to be a dramatic switch. And it's just no sugar, no added sugar. So anything that came out the ground with sugar in it is fine. But anything that came out the ground that didn't have sugar in it and then more sugar or sugar was added to it. And no, no, no. Like it's a, so it, it just. So you can eat a, you can eat a strawberry. Yeah. Can you eat strawberry? You eat fruit. I mean, these are my rules that I'm making up for myself. There's people who do no sugar, but that's a little bit more medical. Like they have a medical problem that they need to figure out. Um, mine isn't that. Mine is just like adjusting my diet in relation to how how much I've been sitting the past like eight months. Have you, you, so have you gained any weight? It fluctuates. You know, it depends. I normally stay like in the 170s. I normally stay in that range, that ballpark. But I think toward the end of this, because um, it just pulls me away from so much processed food mm-hmm. that I'll probably lose. I'm definitely going to lose like mad pounds i'm we eight days in so it's like yo i'm definitely gonna lose like mad pounds so you're eight days in and and as of today have you gotten have you gotten through the headache phase yeah the headache phase was the first day so that was it just one day yeah just one day i can only compare this to stopping when i stopped caffeine for a while and didn't drink coffee soda anything i got massive headaches for a while but it was more than one day no, nah, I mean, that's because your body was probably more like in it. I wasn't eating. I mean, when you think about it, it definitely like makes you frame very objectively what your sugar intake actually is. And the majority of my sugar was liquid. So it was like sodas and juices. You drink soda? Um, yeah. You don't strike me as and, a guy. Yeah. I drink, I drink some, I, I get into soda, but more juice than soda, to be honest, more juice than soda. And, but it was like, and now I got into Gatorade recently because I had like two cases for some reason. And then it was like, uh, I wasn't, when you think about it, I'm not really drinking that much. Right. But the day before I started the fast, the sugar fast, I went crazy. I drank, I was, I ate like a Sunday. I ate like mad, like sugar shit. Like I was just, I've been just getting out the way, cookies, all kinds of shit. And uh, I think it was that because I just loaded so much on the front end that the next day it was like a crash and my body was expecting like, oh, let's, let's do that again. I was like, nah, homie, we're done. So just that first day I had a headache. And then after that. You did this on purpose. You went sugar, you went sugar crazy on purpose because that was your last day. Yeah. Yeah. And it was like things I was like, you know, let me drink that soda, get that out of here, you know, because a month later I got stuff in my in my cabinet. I went to my cabinet. It was like everything has sugar in it. It was like, damn. So like spaghetti sauce, chicken broth, you know, all that shit has sugar in it. So I was like, damn. So there, I'm a, when I when I go back, um, it was really for me to get off of sugary drinks, you know, and kind of give cakes and pies a break. Even though I wasn't really cake and pie heavy, but definitely sugary drinks was something I wanted to pull out. And then when, when 30 days is over, with 20 more days, I'm going to I'm gonna go back, finish the shit that's in my cabinets. Like, it's, it's cans finish of soup it and shit like that. Yeah. You, you got a tra- you got, you a treadmill guy? You got a treadmill? Who, me? Yeah. Me? No. I have, uh, I have swords. Oh, okay. You can, you can do cardio with swords? Yeah. <laughs> no, you can't. Yeah. You, yeah. You put, what cardio you nah, can do? There's, there's some called subuti which is basically the Japanese word for swinging. And uh, suburi is uh, uh, where you practice cut cutting. And I mean, shit, if you really in it, and then there's different weights of the wooden swords. So I like the big, heavy wooden sword is called a suburi toll. And that shit weigh like maybe 
maybe like maybe like four pounds, something like that. And I used to do that. I used to do like six hundred strikes. Oh, that's not but dangerous that, cardio at all. That's not dangerous yeah. cardio. No, but it's wood. It's a wooden sword though. You feel oh, me? Wooden, and just okay. the just the motion that you're doing. But there's lighter ones. So there's there's like swords that weigh probably like a pound or like two pounds. And uh, you just you're doing this rocking like this motion that you do, which is very like cardio. And if you do like a hundred of them, you know what I'm saying? Like you right, burn right. some calories. I got you. Mm-hmm. The course, What's your man? workout? You you be punching people at the crib? No, no, no I, don't, I don't ever <laughs> want to punch anybody ever again in life. My hands. Yeah, speed are, bag. Yeah, I got a speed bag in my studio, but um, I ain't hit it in a while. I ain't hit it in a while. I got treadmill, um, jump rope, uh, dumbbells. I got a decline bench, incline bench. Um, I ain't so much as looked at none of that shit though. I I, also uh, got, so I got a boxing gym attached to my to the build to the to my studio, and the person who owns it is a friend of mine. He gave me a key, so I can go over there at any time. And it's like a whole it's like a whole gym in there with like weight apparatuses and all kind of equipment. It's a ring in there. So you can, I, I can go in there and get as busy as I would like to, but I just haven't, I can't, I can't, I gotta, I gotta be focused on my workout in order to really get into a workout. And I just mm. been focused on so many other things from, you know, from creative shit to charitable shit to fucking, you know, building, building in here. So, you know, that's why, you know, I'm, I'm a little heavy. I usually like to stay in the one seventies myself. But when I'm in the 170s, I'm in shape. Lupe mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So now I'm in the 180s right now. I'm out of shape. Lupe Fiasco. So no shirt off. No shirt off. No nothing like that. I am not that guy. If my shirt comes off, it's going to be when I'm at least a little bit ready. I ain't got to be all the way there, all ripped up. But I'm not going to be, why is his shirt off? I can't be that guy. Mm-mm, 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 bad look. So we're not doing a no shirt podcast anytime soon. We're not gonna do that anyway. <laughs> <laughs> that's, the, that's not a good look. <laughs> not a good look. You should not make a, a t-shirt. Look. Make a t-shirt for Royce with uh, abs on it. With the abs. Yeah, <laughs> I need it, man. I need it. Make me one. Ab, abs and abs. some some pecs. Some pecs oh, poking just, out. I can just do. So like, you don't ever you don't ever work go out. Buy, just go buy a physique. You do that. You don't ever work out as a uh, as a creative, like when you're when you're maybe stuck on something, as like an outlet to get out there and kind of f- clear your thoughts. Mm-mm. You know, I'm at my best working out when um, I can set a goal and then stick to that goal. So I find that like the last time I got in shape was on the Book of Ryan rollout, and um, I timed it so. Eight weeks, eight weeks leading into the book of Ryan rollout. I just focused on only working out. I didn't go to the studio at all. So mm. I like to let myself get all the way out of shape. That way it you gives know, me right. some inspiration to get back in shape. And I don't mind how out of shape I get because I know so well how to get back in shape. Mm. Pretty much I can get back in shape quick, but the older I get, the harder that's it's harder to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The age yeah, is the age is definitely catching up. That clock is ticking. And it's then I ticking. got injuries, so I can't really like go crazy like that. So injuries and old, but I'll I'll what bust it. Like I find if I I got like like my hip, of course, and then like little shoulder shit. But I'll go back in and just like like I got some dumbbells, I got some uh, some kettlebells, and you know I'll do I'll do pull ups and stuff like that. Uh, you know, just the basic kind of calisthenic type joints and then some weighted curls and stuff like that. But it just like the injuries start to flare up. You know what I'm saying? And you're thinking like, well, what am I really doing this for? You know, like, is there like with you, it's a goal. Like I'm gonna do it for the album roll out, come out looking all like all cut. Right. But me, it's like, what the fuck am I finna do? Like, I ain't finna do nothing. Like, I finna- <laughs> you know, you know, that's how I feel about heavy weights. Why? Mm. I don't I don't mm. mess with no heavyweight anymore. I don't see the purpose of it, man. I mean, I know the purpose of it is to bulk up. Mm. You know, heavyweight is to bulk up. But bulk up for what? If you're going to compete? 
what just to take your shirt off in the video shit you might as well just keep it tight and small and that way when you get out of shape you don't look like a big fat doofus <laughs> you know what I'm saying like because that's how it is when you when you put all of that when you put all of the um the uh the big excess muscle weight that you put on when you're bulking up mm -hmm. i mean shit, it stays there and then a layer of fat comes over it when you get out of shape this shit mm -hmm. is hard to maintain it's really hard to maintain really hard to maintain and then like what do you need to be that strong for are you gonna be your own security you know what i'm saying like you can't can't move your neck you know what i mean like it stiffens you up you can't be loose you can't be loose lifting all heavy and shit. you know what i mean so i just like to keep the weight light keep my weight down and um more stretches more stretches and just like you said calisthenics i can't do pull-ups no more because i fucking injured myself so you know sit-ups push-ups shit like that that's the best shit for you you know what i mean mm -hmm. body shit mm -hmm. core strength shit that's the best shit for you i can't do sit-ups because my fucking back i mean i could thug it out and that'd be the thing like i'd be trying to just thug out through it and then it's like nah blood you're not you finna you're not gonna be able to walk tomorrow so I gotta I gotta I'm I'm really like in a healing like rotation. That's part of the no sugar December too, right? To like take some of the inflammation out, take some of that shit out uh on my joints. Um so yeah, man. I got my yoga ball. I ain't sat on my yoga ball and man. But I do when I when I when I do my like my bicep presses or whatever, or presses with the dumbbells, dumbbell presses. Mm -hmm. I use the uh the yoga ball. So I'll lay I'll lay back on the yoga ball, feet on the floor, oh, so you, and I'll do my you work your core too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I'm trying to get the most out of it. Those are good. Those are good because you gotta control, you gotta control your you gotta control your core and not let yourself swing to either side. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. That was a killer. Tom, you Tom, know about those? Tom looked like he don't do shit. Tom was like, Yeah, I don't do anything. Very, very wrong there. <laughs> I have a very regimented schedule. I try to work out every single morning. I have Wait. I have a thirty minute workout that is the Tom Frank workout. Let's okay. hear this: the TM, I, the TMW, no, the TFW. Yeah. Ooh. That's right. So we go up in my attic. I have in my attic. The only problem is my attic. It's freezing cold in the winter and extraordinarily hot in the summer. But that's part of the elements. So I I go up there. I have. Uh, I do my leg crunches. I don't know what it's actually called, but I lay down on my bench, legs fully extended, and I crunch them up. I do that set. I do my triceps. You mean crunches where you lift your legs up? Yeah. Okay. I do my tricep, my tricep dips. I do my push-ups. I do my sit-ups. I do my arm presses. I have my bench. I do my – I have a little circuit, and then I have a, a heavy bag that I like to hit. And I do yeah. it at three times, three time rotation. You Are you pretending that you're in prison or something? That sounds like a prison workout. <laughs> like, hey, how long you hit the heavy bag for, Tom? I, I go, I go three minutes, like a regu straight regulation. Uh, three minutes straight. Yeah, three Ooh. minutes straight. It, it wears you out. So it wears you, you out. Like, wears you, you out, Tom? Hitting, Are you just randomly hitting it? Do you know? I'm like, just random. How to throw, you know how to throw any combinations? You not know, not like I probably there? should. I, I pretend like I'm fighting it. Is I'm it bouncing swinging, around. Is it swinging when you hitting it, or is it like a heavy, like a heavy bag? It's a heavy, heavy bag. Okay. Are you yeah. headbutting it? No, I don't headbutt it. I throw up an occasional leg every once in a while. <laughs> <laughs> giving it some dome. You <clears throat> super I angry. Headbutt. One night, one day, I'll try to headbutt it, and my, you know, I might be missing for a day because I knock myself out. Yo, mm -hmm. what's up with all the festivities in the back now? Like your your background hey, just constantly changes. Hey, it's the holidays, right? That looks Put like that looks lights. like that looks like a fire hazard. It's not a fire hazard. It looks There's like a regulation a regulation holiday lights. Fam those, famous those, last words, man. Those are mm. Christmas lights. Yeah, I got a little Christmas. It's it's, it's the holiday season, guys. It's December. Not mm. here. I've been stuck in my home for nine months. I need a little festivity. I need a little change up. I need a little something different. Nah, on. I think you're trying to be like Royce, right? Royce is red have light. light. Yeah, I think you're trying I, to be I, like Royce. Actually, that's that's a good point. Royce trying to be like me, and then you trying to be like Royce. 
<laughs> and who are you trying to be like? According to according to my Instagram, I'm trying to be like you. I'm trying to be like a white man. They're like, this is why you always talking white with the vaccine. So that I think that we is what we're thing. doing right here. <laughs> it's a big rotation. If it wasn't for these five kids, I'd be right there with you, Lou. No Christmas. Fuck that shit. You don't get that luxury when you got five kids. Mm-mm. You can be like, man, that's a that's a you know that but that's a that's not a that's a pagan holiday, and that's my kids be like, yeah, whatever. Okay, here's my list. I don't care if it's a Santa or it's not. Here's my list. I see. You, you. know, between the three of us, we have eleven kids. What do you mean? Between the three of us, we got no, eleven. No, between kids. the two of you, that's not how statistics work. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have kids. Lou, they giving you a hard time over the vaccine? Of course, but I mean, it's it's slowly coming to an end. All you motherfuckers will be taking it. Get ready. All that shit you're talking right now, eventually. When you're not able to go into Starbucks anymore, you will be getting that needle. I'm, it's already passed. They me, if they tell me I can't go into the Starbucks now, I'm really gonna have to consider it. It's all right. people, I, people, I, people, people, people. Uh, what's that? What's the word people doing? Uh, we used to, what we used to call it? Not blowing smoke. We used to call it blowing smoke, but now smoke means something else. People, just, people capping. being fugazi capping. now. They capping, capping at this point. Yeah, it's a lot of people capping about they're not gonna take the vaccine. Like your ass gonna take it. Like, let's get it. You're going to find that shit going to be $5. It's going to be at CVS. Motherfuckers are like, yo, what are you doing? You're like, yeah, I'm going to take it. I think it's so the good. first I woman. Good. I think it's good that people are questioning it, though. That's good. I mean, fuck the all first that. Woman Just take took the it vaccine. Today. <laughs> the first woman took it today, right? In London. Yeah, she was 90 years old. Yeah. And she was I the first it. one, right? She took it today? Yeah. Yep. And she, if, she grow, if she wakes up with a dick tomorrow, then we know. <laughs> It's gonna need to work on it, but bit. she's not the first person to take the vaccine. She's the first person to take the vaccine, I guess, outside of the trials. Out, out, right? Yes, yeah. Outside mm-hmm. of the trials, there's yes. tens of thousands of people who've taken the vaccine. Tens of thousands. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. She's, she's the, the first, first non-trial. You seen, you seen that mm-hmm. list with the, with the possible side effects? I don't know well, if it's real though. Who's it's not, it's not real. I just want to say that How first. You know? How you know? Because <laughs> I know it's not. I see your face. <laughs> your face looked like you pulled that shit. Out of the depths no, I, of the I, internet, I didn't post it because I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if it's if it's valid or not. But it, I put funny. it to you like this. I put it like funny. this. Is it for? Is it formatted to fit on Instagram? I, is I the list know. is the list formatted to fit on social media? If it is, that shit is fakeity fake fake. <laughs> somebody post, somebody posted it. I looked at it. I was like, Jesus Christ. I mean, you know, that's 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 what the internet does, right? It's like it it uh. You got some people that's genuinely questioning it. Then you got some mm-hmm. people that just like mm-hmm. straight up socially engineered conspiracy theorists. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? So I'm I'm past the I'm past that. I'm past the conspiracy dudes and, and girls. I'm on to just the dudes who had genuine questions, you know, and they already like, yeah, I'm gonna take it. I just want to know what this is. I want to know what that is. But they but I'm I'm done with the with the uh with the with the whole taps and the caps. Yeah, you gotta. I, I think it's just something. I'm, I'm, I'm me myself. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do my research. That first, that first trial of them. I'm gonna monitor those people closely <laughs> because I am not trusty. <laughs> well, you got. Well, I mean, right now the clock starts right now. To be honest, yeah. like in the UK, um, it's folks who getting who getting vaccinated right now. Then in what is it, 21 days, they'll get the second dose. Um. Mm-hmm. And then you got a a month to kind of watch and see what happens. So it's it's more than just the 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 uh, the, la- the second person. His name was William Shakespeare. Or some stupid shit. I don't know if I. <laughs> but now now you can. Now it's like if you, if that was your your hang up. I just want to watch other people get it. Other people have got it. You can watch them, and then you can see. Yeah, what's I'm, going I'm saying what 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 does the does the um, vaccine supposed to prevent you from being able to catch it? All together, it just makes you immune to it. It gives you immunity to it. Uh, I mean, so it's like nothing can stop you from from COVID getting into for the for coronavirus to get into your body. Okay, you would have to like wear nose plugs and eye patches. Like, so there's no guarantee on that front. So you always be at a space vaccinated or not, whether you caught COVID before or not. There's always the possibility. There's you're gonna catch your COVID. The coronavirus is gonna get into your body. Period. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. What the vaccine is for is to make sure that the COVID, the coronavirus that does get into your body 
doesn't grow up into COVID-19. Right. Okay. So it's like we finna dead this shit before it even happens. As these cells come into the body, you've been vaccinated. Your body's ready to just soon as that shit comes into your nose and goes down into your, your throat and all that shit, your body's like, nope, 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 stomping it out before it's able to kind of express itself. So mm-hmm. if you want to call that infection, you know what I'm saying? Like infection would be uh your your is gonna lead to the disease. So mm-hmm. you can but but is is it gonna stop COVID, is it gonna stop coronavirus from entering your body? No. Is it gonna stop it from being able to infect? and lead to disease yes mm-hmm. right what's on that it's really what? no different Go ahead, Tom. it's no different right than the vaccine for measles or for smallpox or what out chicken pox yellow fever right i mean it's it, the it same is. line it's a live no vaccine. no it's not it's not it's not not so so there's like about five different vaccines um and each of those vac each each one of those vaccines falls into two categories the mrna which has never been, which is unprecedented in terms of not the technology of mRNA vaccines, but the uh, uh, being used um, on, in the public, right? At scale, right? But the technology is decades old. They was, they was studying mRNA vaccines, I think back in the nineties. And then the regular vaccines that you're talking about, like the measles, everything mm-hmm. that, that we've experienced before, which, has, which hasn't been mRNA, has either been dead virus or weakened virus or live virus, right? in a weakened form. So there are vaccines. uh, Like I think the Russian vaccine is that, I mean, you can look them up. There's a, there's a quick little chart that you can check. It might be on my phone. Um, There's uh, the Pfizer and the Moderna vaccines are MRNA vaccines. So they don't have the virus in it. They just have that, that, uh, that MRNA um, to, to code for the protein to create the spike protein. The other ones, um, ha- are like traditional vaccines with the virus inside of them, so that's kind of the difference. Mm-hmm. But the but Pfizer with, one has the little chip to track you, right? Stop doing this, Tom. You can't do. You can't play with that because you playing with it leads to motherfuckers taking you serious because you white, and then it becomes like, see, I told you. I I did hear someone say that uh, on your Instagram live today, and I actually looked it up because they were, they were, they were yelling out a patent of 060606, which is something that Bill Gates has. I actually looked it up because I was curious if this was even, it was kind of interesting, but the guy, man, that guy, whoever that guy was on your live, he was all over the place. I'm just glad glad people are not talking about the 5G towers no more. I was so, I was, I was, I've been over that for a long time. Like, come on, man, 5G (laughs) towers. All right, so check it out. Check it out. I got uh, how some of the COVID nineteen vaccines compare, and it's the companies and the doses. So like, Oxford, uh, Oxford, uh, U- Oxford University, and AstraZeneca. That was they're from the UK. They have a viral vector, which is a genetically modified virus. Okay, so they have kind of more like a traditional. You're going to get the the virus, right? Excuse mm-hmm. me. And it's it's two doses. It's sixty two to ninety percent effective. Um, and you can store it like in a regular refrigerator and the cost per dose is like four bucks. You got the Moderna virus, which is the U.S. virus. That's an RNA one. Um, and it's part of the virus genetic code. That one is also two doses. It's 95 percent effective and it uh, it needs to be stored at a negative 20 degrees Celsius for uh, up to it can be stored up to like six months. And that one is uh, like thirty three dollars a dose. And then you got the Pfizer Biotech, which is the one that is a. Uh, um, the one that they're about to do the FDA approval for, right? They're, they're doing it. I think emergency use is like either it might be today or tomorrow or Thursday or something like that. But then, um, it's not, for, it's not up for full FDA approval. I think to l- either later this month or something, but that one, the Pfizer BioNTech is a, is a collaboration between Pfizer us and I guess Pfizer Germany or whatever, or whatever those two companies uh that was an rna virus that's an rna vaccine again two doses it's 95 percent effective this one needs to be kept at a negative 70 degrees celsius um and that one's gonna be 20 dollars a dose and then we got the gamelia gamelia which is uh the sputnik 5 that's the russian one and that one is a viral vector so again that's another like like traditional vaccine where you catch mm-hmm. where you're getting some of the virus that one's two doses. It's 92% effective. Regular refrigerator temperature and what they call dry form 
And then that one's going to be about $10 a dose. So there are, those are kind of the four uh, main leaders, but there's also the, the Chinese one that they're making. And I don't know if the Chinese one is mRNA or if it's viral vector. And different different countries so when, in the world are, are picking different like viral, different vaccines. Out of those? Which one are we going to yeah. be using here? We'll probably, the I Pfizer mean, one? overall, like right now, what's sitting in like warehouses right now waiting on FDA approval is the Pfizer one. The Moderna one, I think, is is still pushed back a little bit because they were they were slow in being able to get really to get. I think they had a problem with recruiting minorities into their study, which they needed because you need to have a uh, your, your test route needed to at least be relative to the demographics of the country that you're using it in. So they needed a certain percentage of black folks, brown folks, this type, that type, et cetera. And I think they had issues like doing that. Um, so they're, they were behind Pfizer, but Pfizer was able to do get it all done and get it proper. So right now it's the Pfizer vaccine. I think the Pfizer and the Moderna one should do a versus battle. <laughs> like the Pepsi, like the Pepsi and Coke. <laughs> <laughs> we got to get Swiss and Tim on the phone, man. We got to see. We got to see. That's who we should have as a guest. Swiss and Tim about the Pfizer versus the Moderna in a versus battle. Who comes out on top? I like it. What you think, Tom? I love it. I'm going to set that up. Um, All right. Now, I'm gonna, so let me ask our, our professional. I got to talk to my spiritual advisor. What are you talking make- about? <laughs> I gotta talk. I gotta talk to my spiritual advisor. That's a tough. I will. I will tell you this though, Royce. I'm more. I'm more in tune to getting the mRNA than I am to getting like the viral vector, like the traditional version. I like the way that was out out of all of the ones that you named. The way that you broke them down, that one stuck out to me. But I just need to. I need to see what Farrakhan thinks first. Yeah, you gotta see what the minister says. What What's the uh? And that and that's the thing with the one with the minister out of Cuba. I don't know what type that is. I don't know if it's an mRNA or a viral vector. But if it was me, I would be more so worried about the viral vector than I would be worried about the, like, just, I'm talking about just me. Um, I would be more akin to really questioning and wanting to see, like, the viral vector one versus the mRNA one. Now, are they, are they open? Are they open in terms of um, dispelling the fucking um, ingredients in these? Yeah. In these- they are yeah yeah you look you can look at every ingredient in all of them yeah um again i don't know what the uh because some of these aren't there there aren't i think the russian one just got approved right and mm-hmm. so they're they're starting to roll out with that one in russia um and i think because that one is a traditional vaccine like a traditional like live virus or viral vector one that one's going to be the same ingredients that we you was probably finding like the flu vaccine or something already like traditional. So all that, all of that stuff will be the same. I don't see why it would be any different in terms of other ingredients, but like mm-hmm. the ingredient number one is like coronavirus, right? right. <laughs> and it's like ingredient number two is like X, Y, Z. I do know that the MRNA one is not coronavirus. Um, it is literally just the, the, the instructions to create the protein. And it actually, what's going to happen is, the protein is going to get created in your cells, right? So you're not being injected with like, like material that. from a vac- from the virus. You're getting just the instructions and your set, your own cells are going to make that particular piece of the virus. And you know why I like do- that Because catching the virus, you don't, you don't build up any immunity to it, to it. So it's not like the chicken pox. Mm. It's not like the chicken pox. You get the chicken pox, you never get it again. You mm. get the, over you can just keep catching yeah you can keep catching that shit and then what they were saying like if you catch it in the wild um there's no real kind of guarantee that you're building from person to person like the, to, to to really like verify that like you right now royce like that you're immune to it right now um they, they got to do a slew of tests to see if you actually got those antibodies and all that stuff present and all this other old stuff a lot of lab work um, where it's just easier to just do the, to get vaccinated. You know what I'm saying? And at least right. they, they can guarantee a certain level of, of effectiveness, high level with the vaccine versus if you just caught it in the wild, right? Because right. the vaccine does a very specific job that you can track and it's been tracked and all that. But when people catch it in the wild, they like, they don't know how your body is going to react to it. 
uh, what other kind of complications and stuff that you had. Because remember, you caught the whole disease, right? Like you caught the whole, you had the whole blown out kind of situation. So, I mean, just in your body fighting it might have just weakened your immune system to the point where it's like your the the shit that you have that would have fought it needs to kind of re- regroup you know what i'm saying right, right, and rest right. and 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 do other things so i mean it's 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 they to get to even get rid of all of that kind of possibility they like look just take the vaccine like we can right. we can at least guarantee with the vaccine that you know if you and if you do it properly you do the first dose 21 days you do the second dose like we can say okay comfortably okay we know that you're immune to it and how long does that last after you get past both doses is that a particular um, amount of time or what? I don't think we know yet, do we? I don't th- yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I, I, don't know. I think there, I there was- I kind of want to see... I was going to say, I kind of want to see two or three of these come out and I get to choose. <laughs> I go to CVS and I can choose A, B, or C. I think that would be fascinating. I think what it is, like the first people, they were saying like, because remember, these vaccines have been around for a while. They know how to make, they were able to take coronavirus, you know, out of somebody, you know, weaken it, grow it, create a vaccine. Same thing with mRNA. Again, that, that technology has been around since the 90s, able to kind of create that. So they've been like injecting people with these vaccines for, I think, since like March or April, you know, starting to test way back then. So you got folks where they got, you know, what's that now, That's like true. nine, nine months yeah. of like you know, being able to see and test and study them. So, but I still don't know, like that part, I don't know. I don't know how long it's going to be. I know another thing that they were saying, um, which is kind of like out, still out to lunch is, uh, um, I was asking some, asking this, these, we're in a room in clubhouse with a bunch of uh, biologists and pharmacologists and doctors and stuff like that. And I asked them a question about like, um, how many cells, does it need to take for the vaccine for to sh- to show like the vaccine has like worked? You know what I'm saying? Like how many like the way it works is they'll inject you um, the the instructions of the protein will go into specific cells. They'll start kind of producing the spike protein. They'll express the spike protein on that particular cell. The immune system will notice that they'll start to kill that cell, right? Um, and then create all the memory cells and all that stuff. So I was asking like, well, how many cells does it need to take? To get in to get to start producing these proteins um for the for it to kind of work and even on that note it was like they don't they can't really answer it not they they they're studying it but it's not at a point where they can like tell you like for sure like yo you know a million sales or ten thousand sales or we just need a hundred sales or we just need four sales they 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 don't know that stuff yet Hmm. Imagine if these came out so that you you could choose which one you want. I'm, I'm getting back to this. Good, it would be the a drive marketing through? thing then. At McDonald's, it, no, it'd be, it would be like a marketing thing. Like you know, like who can market their product better to get them more use? Then it becomes down to like the crazy commercial with some guy on there saying we are 99 percent proof on this thing, and it would be the beautiful color and some sexy woman on there getting pricked and that's what people would 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 go that route rather Sexy than the other woman route. getting pricked damn tom <laughs> my, my apprehension my apprehension about the about the vaccine is not even necessarily for myself you know what i'm saying like i i feel like i put the worst of the worst that america has to offer into my body myself <laughs> <laughs> i'm not really tripping about me it's just my babies man like, their bodies are still growing you know what i mean like the bodies are still growing i just want to be real particular on what me, I allow mm, mm. to put into my children as mm. their bodies are growing, their brains are developing. You know, mm, I love point. to know. I love to know possible side effects. You know, like long term effects. I love to just have some answers. I just hate America just being like, yeah, don't worry about all that. Just take it. Like, no, I don't fucking have a reason to trust you, America. Mm-mm-mm. I need no, more. That's answers. me. That that's me. That's not America. That's Lupe saying just take. No, it. but that's like, how they act. That's if you it. act I'm, well, I mean, if you talk to some doctors and you straight up ask them, maybe they don't know. That's that one case. And it really takes a specialist and people actually worked on a vaccine. So there's folks that are flying around, especially now, because we're, we're at a point where we actually have the vaccine. And now it's just people. Not, now it's not an issue that we don't have a vaccine. Now the issue is going to be getting people to take it. Right. So there's right. that that hurdle. So you got a lot of people that are actually really open up and down the kind of medical chain that are uh, being open about what they don't know. 
right? What they do know. Um, there is something like to your point, there is something about um, children and pregnant women, mm-hmm. you know, that, that is of concern, right? Um, but again, there's different concerns versus different vaccines. And it, that's a concern even outside of COVID. You know, that's what a concern you, just in children? general. No, um, nah, I just think it was like, you know, like the testing isn't as the testing was kind of focused on a particular group and a particular demographic. Right. Mm-hmm. And where there is something to say that children aren't necessarily super at risk, but they're 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 not super at risk for a ton of reasons. Right. And one of the reasons which blew my mind was that children are short. Right. So they're kind of out of the way of like hum- of adults, like sneezing into each other's faces and shit. Like it was just like never thinking about that kind of variable. Right. Where it's like mm-hmm. the kids are they're They're kind of like out of the, the way, so to speak. Right. Um, and these things, these aerosols kind of remain in the air and move around and stuff like that. So not saying that that's the only like that's the most important. Like, aha, like they're, even with that said, it's still just one aspect. But that just accumulates into all these other factors where it's like kids aren't really you know, representative in terms of being like a, a in, at risk in danger kind of population versus older folks or versus kind of middle aged folks. So the focus of, of the, the studies have been like in one particular demographic, the most the most yeah. affected right now. So there's still kind of like, well, was the, what does it look like on pregnant women? You know, and it's kind of like, well, do we want to risk pregnant women in the trial like that? I was gonna say, the they didn't test anybody, you know, right? Like, what do you mean? They, I mean, I'm assuming they could not have tested that. On pregnancy, that's what I'm saying. So it's like you make the decision yeah. where it's like, do you really want to kind of, or should we just focus on this population, see how it turns out, you know? And then it's like, okay, it seems safe for that. We can then we can do more focus, more specialized and focused testing, which I'm assuming is probably happening, you know. But again, it's another thing to risk yourself, you know, in a trial versus like you're pregnant and you want to risk your your baby, you know, at the same time too. So it's, it's things that you can just, if you just look at it kind of common sense, like common sense will, will kind of explain that, you know, like, yeah, but that's, that's on the table for people. And that's, that is an issue of concern. And it becomes like, you know, if the vaccine is safe for adults, nine times out of 10, it's probably going to be safe for children. Um, but again, there's also that thing of, you know, is it the live vaccine? Is it the, is it the viral vector or is mm. it the mRNA? Like which one are we talking about? You know, the mRNA probably is good for everybody, right? But the live the live vector one is like, well, maybe maybe we'll hold off, get everybody else vaccinated, see how that plays out, and then you know we'll, we'll we see if that's good for kids, or if not, give kids mRNA, don't give them live virus, you know. So we'll see. How you think? How you think this thing's gonna actually roll out? I'm fascinated to try to figure out. I mean, how how's it really gonna roll out? Are we going to go in the CVS? I mean, are people going to pay for this? Top, like, uh, how's this going to work? I have no idea. The same way you can get a flu shot at your local pharmacy. I don't think it'll be readily available. You think it's going to be the same way, or do you think it's going to be a little bit harder pushing than that? Harder pushing this, means what? Meaning, yeah, like, what you do you know, mean harder pushing? This card, you got to add this card in order to do this. Well, I mean, you know, you joked about it earlier and you actually said something about it on your own. Con- I mean, are we going to get to a point where Starbucks, where your concerts, where other people are going to require it? I mean, people don't require you to have the, the flu shot to mm-hmm. go do things. Mm-hmm. But is it going to become something like that? I mean, I'm, I'm, I mean, I was kind of interested about the fact that you came out and took a public stance that you said you're going to require people to be have the vaccine to attend your show. Yeah. It's kind of a big statement. Not but really. Are you just the first of many that are going to do that? I mean, I mean some Starbucks going to do it? Some artists, they're letting their they're letting the promoter make that decision on their behalf. But you better believe there's artists mm-hmm. who are like, you know, me, I'm low scale. I'm not filling up. Well, I can fill up a stadium depending on where it is. But for the most part, you know, I'm not filling up stadiums. I'm doing, you know, small rooms and, you know, theaters and stuff like that. And uh which would you know, be even at more dangerous, right? Huh? Which would actually be more dangerous, right? Yeah, because there's less like mm-hmm. space, more people kind of crowded on each other, I like standing room that. only. Yeah. So for me, it's like promoters, promoters already know that. Venues know that. You know, like this is something where they had a meeting right when all this started. That the the face of the 
without a vaccine at the face of the live music industry, and not just live music, live live uh, concerts of any kind, comedian specials, anybody mm-hmm. that's on stage Comedy, in front of a group yeah. of people, podcasts, live shows, all that shit, speaking engagements, keynotes, all that graduations. Um, it's all going to be affected without a vaccine. And then it becomes like, okay, well, once you get a vaccine, what are you going to do to put in proper protocols? Because even with a vaccine, you still got to have social distancing. You still got to wear a mask. So we're still six months out, you know, maybe even more than that before you even get back to anything that looks like uh, prior to COVID in terms of performances. Mm-hmm. Right. And then when that happens, it might be a mute point to say like, um, you know, by that time you could get to a point. I'm just saying this cautiously. You could get to that point to a herd immunity point. If we got a real nice vaccination campaign by the summer where you got, you know, a majority of the population getting vaccinated, blah, 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 blah. People, all, everybody who's like, I don't want to take it first, but it's okay. 16,000 people have taken it now. Like, are you going to take it or not? Like, what the fuck? Um, and we reach those hurdles and we start clearing those numbers Six, or 16 million people have taken it. 160 yeah. million people have taken it. Like, come on, bro. What you doing? Yeah, yeah. Once we get to a point where, where it's, it, the general consensus is standard that it's safe. We're going to be, we'll be all right. Everybody, everybody, I think, um, would be good with taking it. I mean, shit, we taking plenty of vaccines. Like you said, we taking the fucking flu vaccine. We taking a whole bunch of them. And this is not the first pandemic. No, it's not. You know, mm-hmm. Our people have lived through pandemics. You know what I mean? Like my mother-in-law was just talking about the, 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 the numerous pandemics that she's lived through. And she personally feels like everybody's acting fucking crazy right now. <laughs> you know, it's, just, it's all perspective it's all perspective you know what i mean and it's like i don't look at this the possibility of this vaccination the same way that i look at vaccinations that have been linked to things you know like that where um where there's there, there's been it's been studies showing that it's been linked and they've been you've been tar- they've been targeting a certain demographic of children you know what i mean mm. like there's a whole mm. lot of corruption that goes on within vaccinations to, to me, this is the perfect platform to do that too, but I don't really have time to worry. I can't, I, I'm with you on that. I don't really have time to worry about that. I got to kind of like choose what the best thing is for my children moving forward. And that's what being a parent is all about, man. It's like, you know what I'm saying? Like making the tough decisions. Sometimes in America, you just face with tough decisions, you know, what but for the world to stay like it is right now, you know, all of these fucking all of my favorite little businesses, you know what I'm saying? Like all our favorite little restaurants in the area, mm-hmm. everything closing down. My yep. we ride around ATL that fucking saw a cheesecake factory close down at ATL, man. That's heartbreaking. Mm-hmm. You know I mean? So I'm I'm ready for shit to just get back at least closer to normal. You know what I'm saying? Like at least at least at least to get the economy going back again, man. You know, well, the one thing the woman the thing that the woman said that they were still kind of out on the fence on was that if a person who takes the vaccine is still able to uh, shed the virus, right? And I mean, I don't see why, like if you like if you got the vaccine, you caught it, right? Would your body either be able to destroy it all or would you still be able to kind of pass on the vaccine, the, the, the level of virus in you? Which is kind of weird question, but it's like, you know, if you got a whole load of vaccine, you know, I mean, sorry, a whole load of virus, a heavy viral load, right? Not not that you were producing it in your own body, right? But just like you got a heavy dose, the dose that's in you, um, would you be infectious and sneezing it out on people and stuff like that, even if you're vaccinated? Um, mm. And with the mRNA piece, I don't know, but it's weird, right? Because it's like the mRNA isn't the live virus, but you can still, the virus will still get in your body. So what if about if the vi- virus that's in your body um, it shouldn't be able to reproduce. Right. But what about the, and what if it doesn't get destroyed? All these kind of what ifs where you can see like, well, we don't fucking know. Like, I guess we going to find out that shouldn't be the case. It sounds like it's some improvements that will probably be able to be made. And I would like for those improvements to be made before I let them know. Uh, But, but the thing is like with live art, this is what has, 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 has had, have, have, had happened is that uh, there were people getting uh, live viruses of things like polio, right? Mm-hmm. And the people would basically, you know, the, they would basically shit out the, you know, like the vaccine. So you, you would get the vaccine, your body would have their immune responses, you would become immune to it. But, you know, from that first dose, 
you, you actually have live virus kind of like in your system, right? So people would like mm -hmm. shit that out. And then that shit actually had live virus in it, but it was the virus from the vaccine, right? Mm. And so that shit contaminated like food and like other shit because the waste treatment and all that shit wasn't really up to par. And so people caught polio, but the polio that they caught was from the vaccine, right? From other it, people's shit. From other people's shit. So it was like an issue where this happened in, I think this happened in, in, in uh, I think in, in Africa, for polio vaccination, something like this happened. And it might've been in India too, um, two places where they had these massive kind of modern polio uh, vaccination <laughs> campaigns. And it was just kind of like, yeah. And they had to like, like figure that out, like suss that out. Cause nobody really thought about that. Like, oh shit, like we gave these people the virus. We gave these people the vaccine, which was the live virus. They became immune themselves, but then they shit it out. And people who weren't immune came in contact with that, with that feces or that contamination. And then they <laughs> caught the shit from that. that and it was a like small a number of people, but it was real. That is terrible. She Jeez. caught the virus Jeez, from, from your neighbor's shit. I'd like, to, happens, I'd, man. Like, I'd like to know that people's shit would never come in contact with anything that I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> you come, in, you come like in contact with boo-boo all day. So you got your two like I don't need that put into perspective for me, man. Like I don't do you, like, do you, I don't like do you keep your do you keep your toothbrushes in the bathroom? Uh we yeah. Oh yeah. shit. Uh, I don't want to do this. <laughs> in the bathroom. Do you not keep yours in the bathroom? Where do Absolutely you keep yours? Not. Absolutely. Where I keep my where toothbrushes do you keep in yours? the kitchen, in the kitchen cabinet. Really? Yeah. That's bizarre. Are you telling no, me it's I have not. A what, toothbrush? Well, yes, you have fecal material in a toothbrush. If you keep I your toothbrush in the bathroom, right? Fucking now. Yeah, you should. You should. You should treat anything that goes into your mouth. Put that shit in the kitchen. Man, I'll put that. I'll zip that shit up and put it in my <laughs> suitcase. <laughs> if I yeah. know I'm gonna have doo doo on it. Yeah, that's real shit. Real shit. So you both have shitty mouth mm. right now. Damn. Now how how weird is that, Tom? Shit mouth. It's weird. <laughs> I'm gonna have my wait. So I gotta bring all the kids. I gotta bring everybody's toothbrush into the kitchen. That's what I would do. You should treat brushing your teeth like I'll. So I don't keep my. This toothbrush. is coming from a from a from a dude who doesn't have kids. Okay, I'm. Hey, I'm telling you as a man who brushes his mouth with shit brushes every morning. <laughs> what you should do, what I do is I keep my toothbrush, toothpaste, anything that goes into my mouth. I keep out of the bathroom, wherever you want to put that. And what I'll do is I'll I'll prepare, like I'll put toothbrush, I'll like rinse the toothbrush off in the kitchen sink, put toothbrush, put toothpaste on it right there. And then I'll only go into the bathroom to brush my teeth to kind of spit, you know, spit it out into the sink. Right. And then I'll kind of either wash, like rinse my toothbrush off right there or, you know, take it back and rinse it off in the kitchen. Normally I do all the rinsing and stuff in the bathroom, but then I'll wrap it up and put it back in the kitchen cabinet. Okay, well, right, I'm routine. putting a poll up because I need to know if anybody else in America. Does. Yeah, my nigga, like, what kind of violent shits are you? Doing, first of all, <laughs> I need to know that. <laughs> you mean that could have like you a role in this too? Because like yeah, spraying if, if poop like everywhere. Guy, yeah. yeah. <laughs> first That's of all, nah. How about this? How how? Okay, when you think about taking a shit, okay, mm -hmm. what is taking a shit? Like, what all is a part of like? You know, what do you consider like shit? Just the physical shit itself? You gotta be right? you gotta elaborate on that for me, Lou. Yeah, I, <laughs> I don't know the So answer. do you consider do you consider the smell to be shit? Yeah. Okay. So that smell is actually physical particles. That's not like a gas or some shit like that. But it's it, it is like gas, but the gas are like it is that's gas. just like physical particles, bro. Gas is made up of physical particles, right? So, and in this so, case, it's dookie gas and it's dookie particles. How does it get into the air? It aerates. That's why you can smell it in your nose. Unless you're like, unless you're shitting on like a continuous flushing toilet or you're, con you're constantly courtesy <laughs> flushing or something like that. Like when poop comes out, if you smell that shit, that shit is at your head level and out into the space and like starting to land on shit. And the the thing is, it's accumulation. So just think how many shits you take. You might take once shit once a day or twice a day or you know five times a day if you're Tom. 
And just think of all that accumulation of shit that's in the air. I hate doo-doo. I hate doo-doo. I got a doo-doo phobia. <laughs> I, really do. I really do. I hate doo-doo, bro. So wait a minute. Do you, do you have a dog? You just fuck me up, huh? Do you have a dog? Who, me? Yeah. No, I don't have a dog. Because I feel like right now I'm taking the new puppy out every two hours and he's literally shitting right in front of me. And now I got to start thinking about this. Yeah. Because now his particles are up in the air. Oh, yeah. I got yeah. dog shit on me. I got kid All, shit on me. I got my listen, own shit on me. If you ran a black light over your face right now, that was able to pick up. That's what they do all over your face? Got to have it all over you? I'm not going to take a shower right now. Tom, have you invested in a pooper scooper yet? Well, now, wait a minute. I take the dog out. I take him out. We have a fence. I go outside the fence into the wood air, wooded area, and I just let him go there. And then I bring him back. I don't scoop it up. Do you have neighbors? I do. My neighbors. Okay, let me. What, 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 what do you guys think about this? My neighbors let their dogs roam. First of all, all let's over. just remember that they're your neighbors and they know where the fuck you live and who you are, and they probably listen to this podcast. So just like, don't do anything want, incriminating. I'm not gonna do anything incriminating. I want your opinion. So I got two neighbors that have dogs. They let their dogs run all over the place. Their dog shits in my front yard. Their dog rolls up to my back in the back porch. The dog is everywhere. I keep my dogs on leashes. And we keep them in our neighborhood because I don't think it's right for people. What do your neighbors have that they let run all around? Oh, the one is gigantic. I don't know what it is. It's a mud of some sort. Big, big dog. It's a scary looking dog, but it's the nicest dog you'll ever meet. But it scares the hell out of anybody who's at my house that doesn't know this dog. (laughs) (laughs) That is a great point. (laughs) For those who who can't see the visual. Come on, man. He don't bite. He don't bite. I hate that kind of dog owner. I hate that kind of dog owner. It's like that says, yeah, he don't bite you. There's no guarantee he ain't gonna tear my ass up. Oh man, I don't, I don't want to go out like that, man. I, I need all my limbs. You can't beat no dog, bro. You can't beat a dog. <laughs> man, you can beat the shit out of a dog. What you talking about? If it's an active dog. fight with you and a dog, it's you just gotta hit dog. it like it's a grown man. Like you gotta kick it. Not that it's motherfucker will feel. It feels pain. Like trust me. It, Fast though. So dog versus man, you're taking man. I'm taking dog. Wait, average man. Yeah, you think average man? Well, let, let's talk average man. If you talking about average man, or you talking about versus... like my brother, brother Muschetti? If you talking about brother Muschetti, you can put him in a in a garage with seven Dobermans, and he gonna come out every He's time. He's coming out. But if it's dog versus me, and I'm not armed, bet on the dog, bro. Bet on the dog, bro. I got injuries. You know what I'm saying? I can probably hook. I can throw a couple hooks, but they can jump. If, if you can get the dog down, if you could get him down and hold him down, you can win. But it's the you've got to get him first. The only dangerous part of a dog is his motherfucking mouth, right? His jaw. But, yeah, but yeah. His, he, he, he can't defend himself at all, right? Except with putting his face in a way, which is also super dangerous. His face is his weakness, but it's also his weapon. But you get a couple hits on the side of a dog on some ribs or some shit like that, man. Please, unless they got locked. Unless you're talking a pit bull, a pit bull where it's gonna lock or some shit like that. Then no, you fucked up. But any other, any other thing like that. Talking about the most dangerous dogs. No, don't get me wrong. I don't know if I know what I'm talking about because I never hit a dog before. I have. I punched the (laughs) shit out of a dog. Woo! I I have. I ain't never hit a dog before. I don't. I don't plan to. There goes our Perina. I seen some pit bulls. I seen some pit bulls that look like if you hit them in the head, you'll break your fucking hand. I've seen some pit bulls that look like that. They just look like they just look strong. They got a bunch of muscles in their neck, and their head just look fucking hard as fuck. Like if you hit one of them, you break your you break your hand. If you break your hand, you fucked. Yeah, fucked. I mean you gotta you have to with animals like I'm just being a martial artist right now. Um, with animals like that, even if they lock, I mean you got to poke their eyes out. Like you got to do some shit to just really like this, the end of this dog's, you know, be, uh, ability to see. Because if I can't get anywhere else, I got to find the soft points and shit like that. And you just got to do what you got to do to survive because the dog will fuck you up. Damage oh, nerves if it hit an artery, all, all that shit, all man. Pit bulls, 
all pit bulls are mixed martial artists. That's one thing you don't. Know. <laughs> <laughs> all pit bulls can grapple. They can all. Uh, they can all grapple. I don't want to get in the fight with a dog. Yeah, and and most most men are not martial artists. True that. Only the chosen few. Only us. Right? Only us. So, I mean, if you're gonna become a martial artist. I like to think that you're not gonna get take you no know, a dog ain't gonna take you down. You know what I'm saying? You can't. But you never know. I mean, you might be running through the woods on a on a jog, and then some motherfucker just come out. And you got to put hands on them. But Tom, Man. why was you saying? Well, so what was you back to you snitching on your neighbors? Like, what do you think was was? Do you think it's so, fair that they allow their dogs to run around? That they allow their dogs to roam free. Mm. Yeah, my wife's gonna. Sh my wife's the one who's gonna end up shooting them, not me. Um. Damn, yeah, why are we talking about the this? one that needs to borrow? You can't talk about shooting your neighbor's dogs on a podcast that's nationally recognized and known, and they know where you live. That's a good Tom. point. We're gonna let's cut that. <laughs> <laughs> let's not cut that. I like this. I like where this is going. Tom, be assertive. You got to stand up for yourself, Tom. Okay. This is what I think you should do, and this is how I feel you should handle it. You should go to your neighbor's house. Okay. Wait till the dogs are asleep. Dogs are indoors. Knock on the door. That might wake the dogs up, so knock soft. And when a neighbor comes to the door, you say, excuse me, can I have a word with you? You just stay right there on the other side of the door, and I'll stay right here. Listen, man, we, something's got to give with these dogs. They're coming, they're shitting up the place. They're shitting all on my lawn. Is there any way that we can work something out to where your dogs shit only on your lawn, and if they shit on my lawn again, I fucking slaughter all of them with my... <laughs> <laughs> That's all you got to do, bro, and we'll see... What happens from there, man? I think it. I think that's very, uh, very. Yeah. <laughs> Another session of therapy with Royce the Five Nine. If you want more <laughs> advice like that, call one eight three three Royce Five Nine. That's one eight three three R O Y C E Five Nine. Any unrealistic advice like that, just come to me, and I'll hook you up. All right. I do have another question for you, Royce. What's that? What exactly is CMOS? CMOS. CMOS yes. is um, it ca it came highly doctor it came highly recommended by Doctor Sebi back in the day, and basically what it does is is it um, it attaches to your uh, um, uh, I don't want to say cells. I think cells in your it, wallet. It, it attaches it, to your wallet. It helps to clear up the mucus. <laughs> it helps to clear up the mucus that's in your body because. Um, most infections become infections by attaching to the, the mucus. So that's like the focal point of CMOS is just to get rid of the mucus in your body. So it's just a, it's a wellness, it's a wellness thing and it's natural. And you drink this stuff? Well, they got, they got pills. They got um, pills in jail. Hmm. Mm -hmm. CMOS. Yep. CMOS. I yeah. was curious. I didn't know what it was. It comes as like a powder. Then you got to kind of like prepare or some people pr prepare for you. It comes as like this gel and you mix it with other stuff or you can just eat it, eat it raw, eat a spoonful. But some people, they just like, they'll just take the pills. Mm -hmm. I know yeah. there was a few times, there was a few times where I felt like something was trying to get me like a cold or something. I just double up on it, knock it right out. It's really good. It works really good. It's really I mean, it's the same thing like, uh, uh, like a like a decongestant, like a mucinex or something like that. Mm -hmm. I've never used it. That's what I'm asking. Oh, you asked? Problem solved. That's, yeah, yeah. I, I saw somebody sent you a package. I think that that I think that that's a that's a good thing to compare it to. I guess I, I, mucinex is more medicinal, does more, but um, this mm -hmm. is more of a preventative, more of a preventative measure. You know, it's it's mm -hmm. just good for wellness. It's good mm -hmm. for wellness. You know, your body is made up of um, a certain amount of minerals. I can't remember the exact number, but um, 59. It's, it's, this shit has the, almost that same amount of minerals in it. You know what I'm saying? So it's good to take shit from the earth, man. Natural shit. You'll find it is great for wellness. So, of course, they got, you know, along with that comes the good shit. And then you got the bad versions. You know what I mean? So I only go Felicity Seamoss. She's straight from Honduras, and then she got the African shit, too. She got the good shit. Yeah, it's, just like dope. it's like dope. <laughs> I don't really want no Seamoss, though, to be honest. Try it. Try it. Try it. You'll like it. You'll like it. It'll give you a nice boost of energy. 
man, I've tried, I've tried so much shit, man. And like when it come down to like all that medicinal shit, I, I remember I said this before. I was doing like the ply, like the mushrooms, uh, not not like magic mushrooms, but like you know, mushrooms are supposed to help with your immunity and like silver, elk silver, col- colloidal silver, all that shit, man. That shit gave me pneumonia, man. <laughs> that shit ain't do nothing. nothing work. Yeah, this ain't do shit, man. Oh, that's what you had. That's what you had that time when um when Kick Push was out. That's this was around like the the cool, yeah. When I with the cool, yeah. with the cool, okay. And that okay. shit was like, man, that shit ain't do nothing. So I'm kind of like, it's certain things where I'm like, I know it takes a a long time for things to accumulate, you know. Mm-hmm. And it's like, okay, it's a slow roll. You gotta you gotta a- accumulate accumulate over time. But if you get hit with like an acute effect infection. Man, that shit ain't finna do nothing. You gonna sh- you like you gonna shit all that shit out because you got m- massive diarrhea and you know all that shit. So, I mean, I just look at it like if you just casually chilling, you 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 know you you keeping everybody kind of keeping healthy. And when I say keeping healthy, I mean that people just ain't like randomly hanging out with niggas who got the flu and shit and all that shit. Then it's cool to kind of maintain a, a diet like that over time and I think yeah it will have some type of effect in a long and a, a, on a spectrum but in terms of like fighting off some acute situation like you just finna start taking CMOS and that shit finna do something like I don't believe that um I believe and I and I say that to say I believe it might have some of the things to do with like the symptoms if it's like a, a decongestant like a like a mucinex or something like that um or maybe like an anti-inflammatory or something like that then I then I, I could see that. But in terms of like some some virus shit or some bacteria shit, like nah. Nah, I don't, I don't think I don't, I don't these, think nobody I'm, I don't get these nobody, antibiotics. I don't think nobody that's <laughs> um, that's selling it is trying to is trying to sell it as that. Yeah. I think it's it's more of a wellness thing. It's more of a preventative, it's more mm-hmm. of a wellness thing, it's more of a way to just keep the keep your immune system up, keep yourself feeling strong. You know what I'm saying? If you get to a point for whatever reason, for God forbid. The infection hits you, then that's it. You got to take you got to take some different measures after that. Mm-hmm. I would like, say it's, it's, it's not medicine, so it's just like a preventative thing. Wellness. I I tell you what blew my mind when I was in Colombia. Um, they had like all of the antibiotics and all of the like medications and shit that we got to get like prescriptions and all that shit for. Go to the doctor for. Like you can go get that shit just over the counter. Like at the airport, penicillin? like you could buy that shit. Penicillin, huh? penicillin, all that shit. I, antibiotics, yeah, all that shit. So when you think about like these, I don't want to, I don't want to call them like third world countries, but when you think of like countries where it's like, man, they got, they got, they got all these uh access to all these kind of traditional medicinal blah 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 blah. It's like, but they also you can walk down to the gas station and get like a Z pack. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, so they got access to all this other kind of shit too. Um, they got, this is interesting. They got, access, they got access to a lot of off the wall little steroids and and, and um and um uh, enhancers, enhancers, performance enhancing shit that's hard to trace too in athletes. <laughs> and how do you know about that? I mean, that's scary though. That's scary. <laughs> is right? that is that how you know? Is that you how you finance half of Manny Pacquiao's? No, I'm just playing. I'm just, playing. I'm just kidding. Is that, is that how you kidding. finance? Don't, don't sue me. Manny huh? gonna beat your ass, man. Is that how you finance that throne? Manny, you gotta, Manny you gotta can trade going me, and <laughs> he can never catch me, man. Never catch me. You know, listen, you know how fast I can run. And people like Manny Pacquiao, I'm afraid of because they're too nice. <laughs> he's too vicious to be that nice, bro. Those kind of people will kill you. They'll kill you. They'll kill you dead. They'll kill you dead. You know what I'm saying? So I'm just kidding, Manny. I'm just kidding. I'm I'm hoping uh, I get that one of those thrones for maybe Christmas. I got one. I got an extra one. Why do you have an extra one? Like, how does that work? I just bought two. I like this. I just bought two. Why why buy one when you can buy two? I've been working on aesthetics, and I had a couple ideas, so I didn't know if I was going to need two of them (laughs) or not, so I got them. But I I mean, I think it would look good right here. Right here. Yo, send it to Tom, man. But it, I'm not sending it anywhere. <laughs> what do you mean you're not sending? Do I got to come no, pick it up? No problem giving Send it to one van. of my friends. But I give it to one of my friends. But my, one of my friends gonna fucking come get it. I'm not sending it. I'm, I'm gonna send the. I'm gonna send the show van. Fucking the chair is heavy. It's heavy. Well, we got a big van. Who got a big van? 
the the show, the show van. So we got oh, a big non-existent van. Oh, we had a big All the money we van. made on t-shirts, we bought a van. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't I didn't I didn't run it by you guys yet, but it's a nice looking van. Yo, make sure that y'all go to say what dot media slash is it shop or store? Which shop. one is it? Shop and go get shop. the go get the, the official Lupe and Roy show t shirts. You know what I'm saying? I gotta remember to, I gotta remember to throw my t-shirt on, man. I'm I'm doing a horrible job of uh promoting promoting the merchandise. I remember to not put Hey, that and on. we're going to we're going to be announcing the winners of our little contest next week. Your little so contest. Stay tuned. Your little contest. Our contest. No, 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 no. No, your. Hey, oh. hey, can I bring something else up that I found interesting this week? Not before I bring something. You may, Let me Oh, bring you you up. go first. You you go first. Please, my brother. I didn't mean to cut you off. No, no, please. I never received a, a long sleeve Lupe and Royce show shirt. That's no, that's not long sleeve. He look, show him, Let me show see. him. I, I like to. It was oh, cold. Cold, okay. cold mouth. Cold <laughs> mouth. Okay, so. okay, I'm sorry. Okay, I'm sorry. So, so there aren't any long sleeve. It's just all short sleeve. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Okay. Okay. Not yet. Cool. Okay. You, yet. Your turn now. Um. You made a statement on our last podcast that you wanted to see Floyd Mayweather fight. Did you see that uh, he is going to fight against see that? Mm-hmm. Logan Paul, which I guess is the brother of Jake Paul? Mm-hmm. I did. I did not want to see Floyd Mayweather f- fight the Paul. Made I wanted it. him to fight Mike Tyson. But I'll take this. This going to be <laughs> hilarious. You think it's I mean, going to be hilarious? Does this guy. This, this guy has no chance. We're talking about one of the all-time greats. Floyd is gonna beat his ass. I, I agree. I tell you, I'll say this. I don't have no problem with the fight because I'm not one of those guys who, who's like such a boxing purist that like I have a problem with our great ones going to get in the bag after they retire. I feel like if he's if he's built his brand to a point where he can just go pick up random bags. Even if it's a tacky exhibition, let him do it. As far as Logan Paul having a chance, not in even in hell. Ooh, he gonna he get don't his even ass have a beat. point one one one. He basically this is the situation. And Logan, I'm not one of them guys who think that Jake Paul and Logan Paul. I think they can fight. Both of them can fight. They can fight. People don't want to give them their credit, but they can fight. They've been training for years, but they can't professional professionally box fight. They fight. They can fight. Like you know, if they if they fighting like the Nate Robinsons of the world, if they fighting a rapper or something yeah. like that, they'll knock them motherfuckers out all day. But Floyd, if 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 Logan Paul lands a punch, it's gonna be because Floyd chose to get in there and carry him and make it more of a spectacle, maybe to try and build up for like a rematch or something like that, like he did with Conor McGregor. He basically carried Conor McGregor and McGregor to the eighth round, and then and then stopped him when he when he felt like it was time to stop him. He'll stop. He'll stop Logan Paul whenever he whenever he feels like it. First round, second round, eighth round, just whenever however he wants it to look. Whenever he wants to. What? How do you think he would do against somebody like? Uh, let's say you put Shaq in there. Shaq, who who would tower over him? Shaq, what, what are you talking there? about? Shaq box. I just had a curiosity. You know, it's Shaq crazy versus- you say that because Shaq boxed Oscar De La Hoya in the exhibition before. He did. Hmm. Look it up. And what happened? Huh? I mean, it was just Shaq being extremely long, throwing a whole bunch of weird sort of punches, and um, Oscar just trying to figure out some stuff. How to get in? It was it was kind of funny. It was kind of entertaining. It's kind of entertaining. Nobody knocked anybody out, right? It was just nah, a- they wasn't there for that. They had hair gear on. It, it looked exactly right. like how how the Jake Paul and Nate Robinson fight should have been. It should have been hair gear. Should have been. It should have not been sanctioned as a pro fight. That was criminal. That was criminal. That was some criminal shit that went down to my boy Nate. Well, he got hurt too. It was it was outrageously popular to the point where it looks like Triller and I guess Snoop are actually coming together to actually form this whole Fight Club thing. Hmm. And I think this is kind of interesting. Congratulations! I I guess they're going to basically run. I don't think it's interesting at all, man. I think that shit is dangerous as hell. And it's dangerous, but people are gonna buy into it. I, love, at least for I mean, it. until I love somebody it. really get fucked up, then they not. Yeah. 
I love the fact that Snoop Snoop is another one, man. I love the fact that he built his brand to a point where he can just he can get money anywhere, man. He can get money anywhere. I love that. I love but that. He's, he's like Shaq. He like the hip hop Shaq. Where yeah. He could just he yeah. just pop up anywhere. Mm-hmm. 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 He, he's form. actually amazing. And he, and he, he pops up everywhere. But um, I don't know. I don't know a whole lot of details about the Fight Club thing. Maybe it's gonna be a little safer. You know what I mean? Maybe mm-hmm. it's gonna be a little safer if they get in there with headgear on, and um, and bigger gloves. I think it's be cool. Be but you cool, gotta think I- what's what set the tone is not having headgear. Motherfuckers getting knocked out. Like that's why that shit is like, oh man, we could see such such going and get his ass beat. And it's like, when you put on headgear, you basically just golden gloves. You mean you might as well just watch golden gloves, right? So it's 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 the difference between an exhibition and a real pro fight. Like how do you how do you get somebody who's never been in a ring before, never had gloves on before? How do you get them sanctioned to fight in a pro fight? Nate Robinson is officially a pro fighter who is zero and one. That was a pro fight. That that took that took Jake Paul to I believe two and zero or three and zero, but yeah, that was a pro fight. No headgear, twelve ounce gloves, in a ring, the undercard to a pro fight. It's crazy. Now they had real fighters on that card. But if you're, it, it only has to be sanctioned, and maybe I'm wrong here. If it's under the regulations of the traditional boxing leagues, but if they're starting their own boxing league. It's not necessarily governed by the same bodies, right? I don't even know how that works, bro. I ain't gonna even lie to you. I'm not gonna. I mean, they you. still might have to go through the gaming commission, right? Of whatever stated, whatever, wherever they get it sanctioned at, right? Like, there's still like an official board mm-hmm. that they got to pass it through if they want what, like certain certifications, or is that's not that's it not the be, case? Are you? It got to be something. I don't know. I imagine you can just pop up in Kansas. Just <laughs> put on a ring, ring and let people and just punch each other in the head, bro. That's like, that's crazy. I, I don't know. It's, it's got to be some sort of, you got to be able to clear You got to have to clear that shit through somebody. Well, they're saying the Fight Club is going to put on five to eight events per year, very similar to Tyson Jones, the Tyson Jones experience. So I'm assuming it's not with headgear or anything like that. And it's also going to feature uh, musical performances. I, don't know. I think I'm it's un- do I'm, well. I'm unexcited. There's other ways to make money to get excited about. And this is all through Triller. So everything is kind of running through this new platform. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm just whatever. Or not new platform, but uh, I guess I'm yeah. hating right now. I'm like, I'm hating. That shit sounds stupid. I guess it just depends on who you put. I mean, if they if they do a better job of matchmaking, it may be it may be cool. Just Jake, just Jake Paul and Nate Robinson was just not a good idea. It was nothing, nothing good could have came out of that. It was just bad. That was just a bad thing that happened in in history, and it's forever going down in history to never be forgotten by anyone. We'll we'll forget about that. All right, speaking of platforms. Am I am I allowed to bring up this whole him laying on his fucking face? What'd you say? Am I allowed to you know speaking of different social platforms coming to life on this? Um, am I allowed to bring up Clubhouse? Because I I I I got introduced to it by you guys last week. Now you're and on I've it. kind of been intrigued by it. I'm on, on it. it. I haven't yeah. done much with it other than Lauren, just Lauren's on it. Paying it. I invited Lauren with my with my uh, guest invite because I wanted her on there too and checking it out. <laughs> I I kind of find it fascinating. It is. I like Clubhouse. I mean, what's your take? You're all over it. I see Lupe everywhere popping up. I'm the man, you know. He don't act like he don't got much to say about it. He on there every day. Him and Joe. I got the juice. I, I'll be in there. I honestly go on there because I got like I actually have one show that we do every um, Saturday called Food Fiasco with Chef Lynette. So we just pick a, a food topic and we talk about that for a few hours. And then I have a uh, what's the other one? <laughs> few hours the martial art because that's how that's how that shit be i try and regulate it to keep it brief but when you're dealing with that type of interact because it's based on interactivity right you could you can go mm-hmm. up there and just that's just diatribe with another person but it's, it's the part is to kind of have the conversation with, with folks um mm-hmm. and then you're actually talking with high level individuals so you're not talking to just like rig- now you're starting to talk to kind of rigmarole but like initially like because we're on like episode damn near 20 or some shit like that <laughs> Mm. No, because it's like open to more people. So it's like, it's just like you're getting away from like 
um, the core founding kind of OGs, which is all these high level people from different walks of life and rest restaurant owners and all that shit. And they're still there now. So we still cater to kind of like that OG audience. But then I got like the martial arts club. I'll do some every for like an hour and a half on the martial arts every like Wednesday or something like that. And then uh, what else do I got on there? There's like the Japanese club that I like chime into and there's shit that's super interesting. And then I'm like a figure to a degree. So it'll be just rooms about me that I'll just kind of like pop into I'm like, what are y'all talking about in here about me about, you know? So that's some interesting mm-hmm. conversations. They had a real great room about Jay-Z. Um, that was pretty dope. Did you see that room, Royce? I did see that one. I did see that yeah, one. I saw that. It looked like everybody was in there. That's probably, that's why I, <clears throat> that's why I didn't go in there. There was so many people in there. It was dope, man. You should have came in. They, they were talking about just because it was like Jay-Z's birthday. And so you yeah, had yeah. like all all the producers, like every like people who were like managers and all the people just around Jay-Z's experience. They brought me up because I was like a part of, you know, the Rockefeller experience around like the Black Album and shit. So, mm-hmm. I mean, it was cool. It was cool. So rooms like that pop up just out the blue and it's super cool. And then you got all these other kind of like sophisticated rooms where people talk about all kinds of shit. You know, I don't really like all the music shit. I'll be there for like the technology shit, the weird conversations and shit like that. It's cool. Is there is there any clubhouse audio online? Like is there is there anybody like ripping the audio and putting in, and reposting it or no, that's not happening yet. I think that's very much anti what the platform's about, right? It, oh, def, that's definitely not what the platform is yeah. about, but that don't mean people are not going to fucking do it. I know there's like, some people me, that record explain. shows, though. I know there's some people that record shows that they might use for, like, archive shit later. But, mm-hmm. you know, they're not, I know some... I remember I did a talk, and one of the homies was like, he recorded, and I was like, yeah, don't put that shit out, bro. Just, yeah. I mean, keep it. It's done. It's done. But, you know, it's for... Hopefully, it's for those moments. But it's some dope... I, honestly, I believe it's some dope-ass conversations that go down on there that should be recorded yeah. just for archival purposes. Sure, for sure. There's some interesting stuff. For, sure. Let me for for the listeners who have no idea what we're talking about. So Clubhouse, I guess the best way to describe it is it's kind of if Twitter is like about words, Instagram's about pictures, Facebook is about hell if I know. But Clubhouse is kind of this social media network completely based around audio, and it, it's it's an audio only platform. You you're kind of in different rooms, hearing different conversations, and it's a lot of dialogue back and forth between, I think there's only about 3,500 members at this point. It's something around that. That's a lot. Of the chat is invite only. Um, no, nah, it's like a hundred thousand people on that now, bro. It's a lot of people. On is it? Yeah. It's mm-hmm. a lot. It's a lot. Oh, I, I was looking at numbers yeah. that said there was somewhere between 3,500 and 5,000, but uh-huh. you might be right. My bad, Royce. I think a, a, a dope part about it is it seems like it's invite only. And it seems like that the industry the inner workings of the industry got a hold of the app before the people did. You know what I mean? The music industry. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, a lot of different industries. You know what I mean? It seems like it started out with, with um, quote unquote, people who are some pot, somebody to somebody. It started out with those kind of guys first. Like you go in there and you see, you know, Lupe, Joe, and like some executive talking super candidly about some music industry shit. You know what I mean? So then you start having like up and coming artists going in there, finding out about it, asking questions. Now it's just all kinds of all kinds of different conversations going on on there. You know what I mean? Like it's dope. It's dope. It's super dope. I can't go in there all the time, but it's definitely dope. Yeah, it's a little bit of a it can get a little and some some people it's just like any other social media app. Like there's people that are addicted to it. Mm-hmm. Like they're on there all day. Like all oh, like just there, but it's I mean, but you ain't got shit else to do. And then the other side of the equation is that the conversations are actually really, really good. You know, like some of them are really, really good. Like there's riff raff talking about nothing, but there's folks on there that are actually talking about like dope shit. And you could jump off one conversation and be right in the midst of another like crazy. Like damn, I didn't even know I was really interested in that. And you just find yourself kind of getting sucked into it. So I mean, it has a value. I don't know how well it's gonna do once COVID is over and all these people got to go back to fucking work. <laughs> but we'll, but yeah. we'll see, you know, when all these it's people are moving around pandemic. and traveling. It's perfect for the pandemic, bro. Yeah, it's, it's definitely it's pandemic. Perfect. It is. Perfection. It came out at the right time. Yep, yep, yep. Kind of like the cool food. And kind of like the the Grammy nominated. Oh <laughs> uh, man. I got to piss again. What time is it? 
How long have we been going? We've been going for about like an hour and like 40 minutes. All right. How about I'll, I'll, I'll wrap it up with this. Mm -hmm. You know how my wrap ups go. It might be another hour, but, and I, I'm pulling a lot of stuff from Lupe because I've been watching you on Instagram this week. Um, role models. You know, you mentioned something about having people should have different role models from, from different walks of life. Like who do you guys consider role models? I mean, a lot of people consider you guys their role models. Who do you consider role models? Mm, just, just period across the board. Across the board. I think, I think Dave Chappelle is a good role model. Good role model or just role model? Period. Good role model. Um, yeah, Dave Chappelle is a good role model. I think it's a good role model. Lupe is, Lupe is a good role model. He is good. The good Lupe, calm Lupe is great. Like overactive, triggered Lupe. That nigga, he ain't shit. But the regular yeah. Lupe, like Zen Lupe, he the man. Yeah, but I mean, it, it's 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 still it inspires. It inspires. It inspires people to give a fuck about something. You know, mm -hmm. like everybody want to sit around and act like they so unfazed about everything, or they don't have a feeling about anything. They don't have a, a thought either way on shit that affects them. That affects their fucking livelihood. You know what I mean? Like. That shit like that, your rants, they force people. They force people to, to feel something. You know what I'm saying? Like whether you agree or not, it's necessary. It's a it's a really it's a really dope use of your platform, I think, in my personal opinion. It you makes them saying? feel like, like not wanting to come to my concerts. Like fuck your shows. Fuck your I concerts. Mean, fuck that podcast. Yeah. How many how many times? That's why I just when I seen that tweet, I retweeted it with the laughing emoji because I knew what it was gonna bring. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But it's it's like when you think about it, how many artists do you follow and how many of them can you actually say stand for something? Take a stand on something. Take yeah. a stand on anything. Just take mm -hmm. a stand on something. Because they're afraid to for what you just said. Yeah, care about something other than telling me how much money you have or how much better than my life your life is. That's only but so fucking inspiring. What are you what are you teaching me? Everybody doesn't necessarily have to be here to teach. I don't think everybody should be speaking. You know what I mean? I think some people should just not speak. You know what I mean? But if you have something to say and you stand on something that's rooted in your values, I think we need to fucking hear that. We don't have to agree, but we need to hear that. And the artists to keep that to themselves is just doing the world a, a, a disservice because the world is paying closer attention to us than they are the news. <laughs> you know, very true Royce can I ask you a question yeah uh is that a hub cap in the background back there um behind the it what is that no the other way the other way the other way is that a hub cap on, on that silver hood? thing on that silver thing back there is that a rim you talking about on my pillow I don't know what that is it's like like right like a, right, right near looks, my here Tom, do you see right what I'm saying? Hand. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, he's he's uh, almost yeah in the back, in the, behind the. So that's a pillow. It's like um, a two inch recorder tape. <laughs> Whoa! So it's like it's a pillow. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Like a, like a two Got inch it. tape recorder. It's like a but it's like a like a real cap. I was like, why is he got hubcaps in the studio? Yeah. It's like never a hubcap. Never been a fan of hubcaps. I'm a rim guy. I'm not real big on hubcaps. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's true. I haven't bought in rims in a long time, but it's this or yeah, I'm a rim guy. I don't like hubcaps. I'm a stock, I'm a stock stock rim type of person. Me too. You know what I'm saying? Me or dip. Too. You know, it got to be the right. It got to be. It got has to be the right size for the car. You know what I mean? I'm not a. You know, I'm not a 18s kind of guy. You like low profile? Depends on the car. You're not a donk. You're not a a donk rider. I'm a fan of donks. Just looking at them on my computer. Do you know what a donk is? No. Tom, do you know what donks are? No, I'm not into them. I'm not into them enough to invest my own money into it for my for my own self. I don't, I don't want to drive one of those, but I'm 
I'm a fan of some of the ones I've seen people have. If you're a car, educate me. I think they're really expensive too. Like just like most, when you see like a really dipped out old school, a lot of money goes really expensive. Donks is donk culture is like donk culture is like Miami, and it's like D O N K, and it's a Miami thing. Uh, That's why I know I'm from from like Miami. But it's basically like it has the giant wheel. Like yeah, still, yeah, Yeah. and they'll make cars get real high. Basically, a truck axle on that motherfucker or something. That's what we need. Like, forget the van. Forget the van. How about a donk van? Let's get a donk. No, no, wait. Why can't we have a donk van? Ooh. That would be something unique. Ooh, that's stupid the way I like. On that note, this is Lupe Fiasco. Make sure that you take your toothbrushes out of the bathroom, because if you don't, there's going to be dookie on them. My name is Royce the 5'9", and make sure that your bathroom consists of toilet, shower, tub, sink, and nothing else. <laughs> That was Lupe. That was Royce. This is Tom, and that's our show. Make sure you uh, subscribe, download, and all of that, and we'll see you next week. That's our show for the week. If you like what you heard, be sure to subscribe or follow. Leave us a review and tell your friends to listen. The Lupe and Royce Show is a production of Say What Media. It's recorded and mixed by Claude Jennings. Our head writer is Lauren Sloat. I'm Tom Frank, and our theme music is by who else? Lupe Fiasco and Royce the Five Nine.